the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. I know we want to, everybody want to go their own way. Somebody, I ain't say everybody. Let me just back that up already. Because that means, hey, that's me, that includes me. <laughs> I know that some people like to, to go and do it their way. But Jesus is telling you, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father but by me. So I'm going to go by his way. He told me what I need to do is to go Jesus' way. He is the way, you know? So just remember that. I think that's important. It says right here is if you, and the reason I like the Romans 10, 9, and 10 is the fact is that you're doing what he says to do. And I, this scripture here, build your house on a rock. If you look at Luke 6, 46, it says, and why call ye me, call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say. And I think that's why some people question if you sit there and say you are saved, you sit there and say you gave this title deed, the title I gave you, but you're not letting him be Lord, you, you're the one being Lord in your life. Then I can see why somebody would ask that question. Because Jesus said the same thing. He says, why, verse 46 again, and why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? You know, that's what I like about John 13, uh, 13, uh, 34 saying, a new commandment I give unto you that you love one another as I love you, you ought to love one another. That's what Jesus said. And some people got, some people, if somebody got an issue with that, they got to understand who's Lord. Is it Jesus or you? Right? So the scripture is sitting there saying that, verse 46 again, and why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Verse 47, whosoever comes to me, who, and, and that's one thing, he gives you a choice to come to him, right? Whosoever comes to me and hear my sayings and does it them, I will show you to whom he is like. I mean, that's, that's, the, that's, that's the way you, you show somebody my salvation and who's the father in my life, my heavenly father is the fact that I'm doing what Christ says to do. And I know we get all wrapped up in doing what somebody else tried to tell us to do. Some of you get, get to the point where my pastor said, Addy, your pastor's not Jesus. It's what the word says. And if he's, he's going to teach you what the word says, and you say, the word says it is written. Go by the word. Don't go by people, uh, their statement, because then you're making them your focus, you damn your foundation. It's the word of God, right? So he says, he is like a man who built, verse 48, he is like a man who's built a house and dig deep and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vermintly, the stream beat vermintly upon that house and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. Jesus is the rock. But he says, the difference of the person, another one, he says in verse 49, but he that hears, this is what I'm saying, listen, because in a lot of cases we hear what people say, you know good and well you're going to make decision and say that's what somebody else says, and you got to understand that is not where is the authority, it's not based on pleasing man, don't be a man pleaser, be a God pleaser, and the fact is that he is what you refer to, what the scripture says about your actions. Cause, Cause that's what people are looking at. He's cause, I mean he's talking about do as them or does as them, right? Verse 47, whosoever comes to me and hears this, my saying and do as them, I will show you to whom he is like. So he's talking about doing. Huh? Faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. And Christ is sitting there saying is, let me tell you the difference between a wise man and a foolish man. A foolish man, and we're going to get ready to read here, he said in verse 49, but he that hears and does it them not is like a man that without a foundation built a house upon the earth, 
against which the stream did beat vehemently, and immediately it fell, and the ruins of the house was great. Huh? Then Jesus, that's that's why we gotta watch out what which we're standing on. He said, is it you you got to uh do the sayings of Christ, but a man who built his house uh, on not on the rock, he faces a place where he will fall. You know? And I, I guess I should use the other scripture to sit there and say, those who build on the rock is a wise man. Those who build is not on the rock are considered foolish. That That's what you got to look at. So, But the key to that in these scriptures here is doing what the word says. If he's your Lord, do what he says. Stop doing and imitating people because people will put you or cause you to make a bad decision and you end up being not where you're supposed to be. What are you going to do? How are you going to answer? What are you going to do when you get to heaven? I said it one time before. What are you going to do? And sit there and say, Lord, I, I, I did what uh, so-and-so said. He said, who, who, who's Lord? Is so-and-so or am I? Is your, are your parents Lord or am I Lord? I mean, that's something we we have to look at and really consider, man. All right. Then I like it. Go to John eight. We're gonna read these and then we'll close out with these few slides left remaining. The truth will make you free. And we talked about that one time before, at least on the Sunday Bible study. The fact is that like make make implies a force, a, a, a pushing you in the right direction. So the truth will make you free. This is, this is John 8, 31. Then Jesus, then said Jesus to those Jews which believed in him. If you continue in my word, see that's an action. That means you're continuing in his word. That's what goes lines up with the scripture we said before. If you do the sayings of him, you're on the foundation, right? Then you are my disciples indeed. So if somebody sit there and ask the question of salvation, he's saying is he who doeth and continues my words, then you are my disciplined ones indeed. And you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. They answered him, we be Abraham's seed and were never in bondage in man. How said thou, ye shall be made free. Jesus answered them, verily, verily, I say unto you, whosoever committed sin is the servant of sin. Huh? 35. And the servants of God is not in the house forever, but the son of God is ever. If the son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. I know that you are Abraham's seed. Now that's one of the scriptures. One of my buddies said there and, and said that they, they, they're not the real Jews. That that's that's Jesus is not saying they weren't the real Jews. Jesus is talking about from a spiritual perspective because he has a physical perspective. He says in verse 37, I know that you are Abraham's seed. That's what he said. He said those Jews that he was talking to at that time, in that, that era, he said, I know that you're Abraham's seed, but you seek to kill me because my words have no place in you. So therefore, you, and we just like that back to Romans 10 and 10, you can't do if 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 it's not in you, you 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 can say it with your head, but you're not saying it in your heart, right? Verse thirty-eight. I speak that which I have seen with my father, and you do that which you have seen of your father. Now that's the keys I was going to focus on. Is is the fact is that Jesus is saying there's two fathers, one with a small f there, and then the, the capital is God the Father. He said in verse thirty-eight. I speak that which I have seen with my father, and you do that which you've seen of your father. <laughs> that's, that's why the subject is called, how do you know God is your father? Now we want to get deep into that, right? We're going to get deep, right? How do you know God is your father? Because here he said, I speak that which I've seen with my father, and you do that which you have seen of your father. Check that out. How do you know God is your father? Let's go a little further. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said unto them, 
If you were Abraham's children, if you be saved, you will do the works of Abraham. What are the works of Abraham? He believed God. It was counted him for righteousness. What? No, he didn't believe in the pastor. He didn't believe in your, 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 your father, your physical father, your parents. He believed in God. It was counted him for righteousness. You sit there and try to use your parents as your, your basis or rationale for doing things. I'm telling you, it ain't, it's building on sand. He said you got to continue in his word, not anybody else, his word. If you can justify being in his word, you're good. But if you operate in your own word, your own opinion, somebody else's opinion, somebody else's point of view, and you try to get somebody else to agree with you, then it's not about agreeing with people. It's about agreeing with the word of God. And if the word of God tells you to be merciful and gracious, then you do that. He said, they said here in verse 21, well, let's go forward again. But he said, well, you know, 39, he said, uh, then answered and said unto him, Abraham is your father, is our father. Jesus said unto them, if, if you're Abraham's children, you'll do the works of Abraham. But now you seek to kill me, a man that has told you the truth, which I have heard of God, this did not Abraham. You do the deeds of your father. Then they said to then they said to him, "We be not born of fornication. We have one Father, even God. They elevated move Abraham to God now. Which one?" Jesus said unto them, "If God were your Father, you would love me." That even lines up with the commandments, right? In John thirteen thirty four. He's saying is, you will love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God, not man, not from certain denominations, not from certain church ministry, but from God. Neither came I of myself. He was saying this, because somebody want to stand on your own principle and say, I'm going to come from myself. But he sent me. But he sent me. God, he's saying, right? Let's keep going. Verse 48. Why do you not understand my speech? You see the subtitle there? You are of your father, the devil. I want to say in the title, I'm saying, how do you know God is your father? Let's get into these things right here. Because we already just read the scriptures where it's saying is, if you was Abraham's seed, then you would love me. But you don't love me, right? He said this in verse 43, John 8, 43, for those that listen in audio. Why do you not understand my speech? Even because you cannot hear my words. Some of us can't even stand the word of God. Oh, people speaking the word of God. Some people sit there and be turned off because they don't want to hear. And you need to be able to speak the word of God, not your opinion. Because that's when people get turned off a lot of cases, right? He said, you are of your father, the devil. And the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not where? In the truth. Because there's no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. That's how you determine whether do you know what God is your father or not. You can hear God's word if you are a child of God. If you can't hear God's word, can't receive God's word, don't understand, can't get it in your heart, then you're right, you probably need to uh, check who your father is. But the good news of the gospel is you can always choose God the Father. <laughs> Amen. That's a blessing, right? He said, verse 45, because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. Which of you, I like this Jesus sitting there saying this, which of you convinces me of sin? Which one of you can sit there and say, I sin? And I think as believers move forward, that's a that'd be a good, powerful statement for yourself. Have I sinned? Yes. But can you convince me of sin? Can you convince that I have sinned? And as long as you're still on that word, it doesn't matter about what they want to do. It's a matter of what the word says. Damn, think about that. Verse 46, what do you convince me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do you not believe me? He said in verse 47, he that is of God, here is what? God's word. 
not pastor, not elder, not sister so-and-so, not somebody, not the whole congregation of man or even the collectiveness of man. See, our foundation is on the word of God. He says, he that is of God here is God's word. That's why we stand on the word. That's why we got to trust in the word. Yes, people sit there and try to make you and think that you, are, you that the, the word of God is not true. But let God be true in every man alive. Ye therefore hear them not, because you are not of God. Think about that. How do you know God is your father? Because you hear his word. Where do you find his word? His word is in the Bible, especially in the New Testament, especially in the fourth gospel. That's the word of God being spoken, being recorded by the men of God that walk with him. So if you stand on the word of God, trust in the word of God, then, then God will be your deliverer. Amen. That, that's what we want to look at and say, that's how you know. So first of all, if you want to ask yourself this question, whether you're saved, and somebody want to question that, you need to sit there and say, well, Romans 10, 9 and 10 says, if I confess my mouth to Lord Jesus and believe in my heart that God is raised from the dead, I shall be saved. Huh? For the, with the heart, man believes into righteousness. With my heart, I believe into righteousness. With my spirit is connected to the Holy Spirit, I believe into righteousness. And my mouth, confession is made unto salvation. I speak life. Because death and life are in the power of the tongue. Speak life. Because that's what you want to focus on. That's the truth of the gospel. That's what I want to be able to talk to you tonight. How do you know God is your father? Because you hear his word. How do you know God is your father? Because you made the quality decision in Romans 10, 9 and 10. How do you know who God is? It's by what he proclaimed himself to be. To Moses, he told him, I'm a merciful God. Not with other people. And that's why I think a lot of cases, people get wrapped up and tied up and tangled up on what people you know, a lot of cases we turned off because of what people who don't show mercy, right? They they don't have time to show mercy because they 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 view God differently from what God proclaimed Himself to be. So those of you that are professing to be Christians, just go and understand you are made in the image of God. Therefore, you should be focused and your, your projections of life should line up with what he proclaimed himself to be. Right? I mean, look, that's what he said in the scriptures. There it is again. I'll show it again because we don't want to be walking away here and say, he ain't tell me. Yes, I am going to tell you. I tell it for myself. But he says in Exodus 34, 6, you're not going to find, you can, you're going to read scriptures up, down, left, right, and from that scripture. But the bottom line that he said is, and the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed the Lord. See, it's capital too. The Lord. The Lord God. Merciful. So therefore, you should be merciful and gracious. Therefore, you should be gracious. Huh? long suffering. That means you should be patient. You should be tolerant. You should be able to put up with somebody because the Lord is long suffering. And look at this. Abundance of goodness and truth. I like the part about the abundance of goodness. So if you have abundance of badness, you judge yourself. You judge yourself. That's what the word says. I'm putting it on the screen so you can read it for yourself. I put it on the screen so you go study and wrap and look at it again yourself. You need to be what God proclaimed himself to be. And see, a lot of kids, we want to sit there and say, I want to, I want to split the Red Sea. I, I want to sit there and raise all these people from the dead. And sit there and say, you better raise yourself from the dead. <laughs> and you need to sit there and be what he told you to be. And told him because what he said he is to is. He proclaimed 
that he is merciful. He proclaimed that he is gracious. He proclaimed that he is long-suffering. He proclaimed that he is abundance of goodness and truth. He proclaimed that. Therefore, you need to do and be that. That's not no laws. That's no rules you're following. This is no regulation you follow. This is a characteristic, the nature of God. That's why we sit there and say that the fruits of the Spirit in Galatians 5, 22 and 23. But the fruits of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, the faith, meekness, temperance against such, there is no law. Then, if you sit down and pray the curve and nature of God, <laughs> if you operate in the character and nature of God, then God is your father. But if you operate in the character and nature of evil, if you operate in the character and nature of being ready to hurt people, put people down, Slap them on the refrigerator. Take advantage of them. Reject them. Be intolerant against them. And not believing and trusting that God, he who begun a good work and you is faithful to perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. If you can believe that, then you can look at anybody that comes toward Christ and come to you to learn about Christ. Man, you know it's like this. He who begun a good work in you, he is faithful and just to perform it until Christ comes. That's why we like the merciful God. That's why he was, the scripture I just gave you tonight, is all about understanding who he is. Huh? What is Hebrews 11, 6, for, for he who comes to God must believe that he is, and there's a reward, a reward of those who diligently seek him. For without faith, it's impossible to please him, right? That's the beginning of that, 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 that verse, right? For without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he, see, we, we, we don't want to be men pleasers. And you got to ask yourself, when you sit there and you're trying to justify your action based on pleasing a man, boy, you need to take a look. Girl, you need to take a look. You, you don't do things based on people. You do it based on him. Amen? Hey, I really enjoyed this time of going over the word of God with you tonight. It's, this is a Thursday night, but it's in 2022. Let's go ahead and start working and start putting our character, not legalism, but character of God in our hearts and our minds in order that the Holy Spirit allows us to bear fruit. Allow him to bear fruit in you. Allow the word of God to be true in you. And that's what I like to do is remind you, me, you know, because somebody, one of my friends recently told me, said, is like, uh, why I need to be like you? You don't. Why should I listen to you? You don't. You don't. You don't. You, you don't need to listen to me. You need to listen to the word of God. Huh? That's what you need to do because it ain't about me or anybody else. It's about him and your relationship with him because it starts with him. You become, he's the head. If you allow him to be the head, see, he has the anointing. All of us are just being children of God, being led by the spirit of God. And I guarantee you, he got your back. And that's what he got my back too. So I'll check you later. I enjoy this time of sharing the word of God with you. And I just pray, Lord, just continue to, to and going to 2022, let's just start focusing on building our character, our, our characteristics, our character, our nature, lines up with God, who he proclaimed even when he did after Moses. He, he remember the mother scripture of those who are listening that know the word, he said, I changed not. Hey, <laughs> I think that's what's important. He changed not. So therefore, what we do and what we claim is based on him, not based on people. Don't be a man pleaser. Don't be a woman pleaser. Be a God pleaser. And everything else lines up after that. Amen? All right. So you have a blessed night and have a blessed tomorrow, uh, as the Lord's willing. And uh, <laughs> we'll see you next time. All right. God bless you. Uh, Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, I'm going to close out. Bye-bye. All right, I'll check y'all later, too. This is this is the end of the uh, video. Uh, and uh, Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. God bless. Bye-bye.